Good day, everyone. Um, I got a suggestion from um, one of our fellow subscribers. His name's Ron. And uh, it just resonated with me. He gave me a couple of suggestions. And so I decided to go ahead and start with his, his uh, second suggestion first. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I think it's his first suggestion here. What he wanted to for me to talk about wheels. Um, you know, carbon versus aluminum wheels. Is there, you know, are carbon wheels really necessary? So how I want to approach this is I'm going to go through here. I'm going to show you guys all my wheels and then just give a an unbiased uh, review of my experience with both kinds of wheels because I've used them. Currently, um, on one of my bikes here, this is my titanium bike. As you can see, this is a Dura C35 set that I have on there. Okay. It's part carbon and the braking surface, so it's part carbon and part aluminum. The braking surface is aluminum. What I like about that, these wheels are, first of all, the price. I got them really reasonably priced on uh, Merlin Cycles for about $9.90 something with shipping and everything. So right about $1,000 and, you know, fair price compared to what, what else is out there. Now. The difference between these wheels and the other wheel, wheels I have, I'm gonna come over here to this bike. These are the wheels I do most of my training on. This is a Campagnolo Eurus rear wheel on this bike. It's from 2006, so it's about 10 years old. This is a Camp, Campagnolo, new, new, I think it's Neutron wheel, the front wheel. And the reason why I have them mixed match is I was buying wheels in 06 and I was also getting frame sets and the prices just kept going through the roof. So what happened was, I'm bringing you over here so you can see, this is a set of the Campagnolo Eurus wheel. Uh, let me bring it over here in the light, it might show better. Bring it over here, there's a little more light here. So this is a Campagnolo Eurus set that I have. Really nice wheels, I've got an unusually sized spoke. It's flat, they got these large nipples, so they use their own tool. They don't fit normal spoke wrench. So they have their own spoke wrench that come with them because it's odd size. That's, that's an 06 set. But as I was putting all the bike stuff together, I got it from Austin, a shop that used to be there called Freewheeling. The prices just started getting over budget and so, I needed two sets of wheels at a time. So the second set, I told them, you know what? We gotta save some dollars somewhere. So that's how I ended up with the Neutron in the front. My prerequisite at the time in 06 to the guy was, after years of racing on Mavic Open 4 CD wheels, I had just bad experience with the Mavic wheels. They they always came out of true. I mean, I'm talking every ride I had to read through the wheels. They were just not, you know, I believe they were just not strong enough for a guy my size. And the person who built it really did not make them, you know, maybe they just weren't suited for me. I think they were for a lighter rider, you know, just to be fair to the product. But I wanted nothing to do with the Mavic Open 4 CD wheels. So in 06, I got these and they're bomb proof, 10 years. Maybe once every two years, I'll tweak a spoke here and there. That's it. I mean, they just work. So I, I've been real happy with them. Since then, they've improved them. You know, it's been 10 years, so they're better. And because what I noticed was I got these over here with the Victorias on them. Those are Campy Zonda aluminum wheels. They cost about 300 bucks on Merlin. So like 320 or something like that. And they're lighter than the more expensive in 06 Eurus wheels. These Euros wheels cost like seven, eight hundred dollars in 06. These cost 300. When I put them on the bike, these are lighter. The 300 dollar wheels roll better. So I don't know, I guess the technology has just improved because these are new. These are like 2015, those are 2006. So even though that was a higher quality wheel back then, this low, what I call good value campy wheels, the Zonda wheels come really heavily recommended because for 300 and something dollars, you can race in these wheels. Now you see I've got my Vittoria Evo on there. They roll really well. So I don't even train on them because of those tires, not so much the wheel. 
I like them so much, I bought two sets. On the, on the Colnago here, that's also Campagnolo Zondas. So these are all aluminum wheels. I have no trouble in the, the group I ride with. I have guys with zip wheels that I drop all the time easily because yeah, the zip make a difference. I own the pair. My challenge was they rode harshly. They were noisy. I stand up to accelerate or sprint. I might as well have a bullhorn announcing to everybody what I'm gonna do. People hear you coming before you even get there. You're in the back of the pack, you start accelerating, you, all you hear is I mean, I hated that, you know? So I hated the way they rode and everything, and so I sold them on eBay. I bought them used, and so I sold them on eBay. I actually made a little profit, because some people love them. They just didn't work for me. That's why I went to these guys. I did the research. I hated the braking on the carbon surface on the zip. I had zip 404 in the rear and front because you know, I'm a pretty tall guy. I'm about 6'2". I weigh about 190 pounds in season. Uh, so I'm a big guy. The wind don't, doesn't blow me around that much. But what I have found is the C35 works so much better because I love the braking you know, that's on here. And the, 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 the main thing is they're not noisy. I mean, it might as well be aluminum wheels. They don't make that noise that the zip wheels make. I don't know what causes that, but these are quiet. And I did a lot of research before I settled on those. Now, why did I get these after getting rid of the zips? On this bike that they're on, I treat that bike almost like it's a time trial bike in a way. Even though the, the setup is the same as my other bikes, I use this bike when I really am in the mood for going fast going off the front and stuff like that I will take that bike out on those days when I'm in that mood those wheels once you get above 20 miles an hour for some reason and I mean they wrote about it and whatever and I, I took it with a grain of salt but from using it over about 20 miles an hour there about it's easy to keep them rolling so you use less watts it's just the physics I mean the front is a little smaller the back is slightly bigger I mean for some reason they just seem to work you keep the speed can be maintained a whole lot easier to roll easier not that these are dogs or anything but really they're not as aerodynamic now um, would I buy a three thousand dollar carbon wheel no when the zips I had I bought them used I paid maybe 500 bucks for the front for something for the rear I ended up selling it for more than that because I didn't use them that much. And you know, there's a big market for them. I, I just don't see why, why they're, they're worth 3K or whatever the people, it's just, I think it's just a marketing thing because I'd much rather I spend the money on my kit. All my jerseys fit me like second skin. And that's where you should start. If you, and I, I will show, I'll put on a jersey and show it on here while I'm talking about it so that you guys can see it. But uh, carbon wheels are nice to have. They're not a need. It's a marketing thing. The guys in the Peloton, the, 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 the sponsors supply it, so they, they ride it. Uh, I, I don't necessarily care for their ride that much. Plus, if you hit anything, they crumble on you. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen these guys when they crash and they're expensive, $3,000. If I, if I did have it, I wouldn't take it to a race. I'd race my aluminum wheels, you know, because uh, they just, uh, they're a little more fragile. And so I, I, you know, if you've got the money burning a hole in your pocket, by all means, but don't feel that you need that to go fast. No, you don't. You're better off getting yourself in shape and getting your position perfect so that that will help you. Okay, I, um, I went ahead and just threw on this jersey because while I'm talking about the wheels, I wanted to stress um, at this point what's important because people talk about wheels because they're talking about aerodynamic dynamic games. So, if you're going to spend money for aerodynamic improvement, start with your body. Where are the, where are the aerodynamic drag? Your body is aerodynamic drag. You start with your fit. If you fit your bike and you get down arrow, arrow within reason where you can still generate power, you don't have to be super flat necessarily. That's important, but the clothes you wear is critical. If you put on a jersey and it doesn't fit you like skin, 
you're catching air. If you see my jersey here, look. When I pull it, it snaps back. That's how it should fit. And that lets you know. So buy your kit. This is like a race cut. This is an XL. It's made by Santini. It doesn't cost any more money. You just have to select the sizing for you. So I normally wear in US clothing a large, but the Europeans their cuts are smaller. So I think that here in the US, we're big and they want to make us seem like we're small. So the large here in Europe is an extra large. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of tells you something. So Santini, Castelli, all of them, when I buy their stuff, I go up one size from the US side. So I wear XL, but really, I'm not that big, I mean, compared to people around here. So this is an XL race cut or arrow cut or whatever they call it. As long as you get that, it's tapered in so it hugs your body. So when you put things in your pocket, they don't bounce around. I'm just going to take this and stick it back there so you can see what I'm talking about. Everything just stays in place. You know, if you, if you put a, a, a bottle in there, it will just, it will just stay in place. Like this. I mean, when, you know, in the summer, I carry extra water and it just stays in place. So if the jersey does not fit you well and you put things in the pocket, you've probably seen some of your, some people riding, it, it sags to the side. Jersey's too loose. Anything flapping in the wind slows you down. So if you got a crappy jersey on, you can have the most expensive aero wheels. You've negated it because your body is about 80% of the drag thereabouts. So you want to focus on the big elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is your body. So get your position right with a good bike fit and get your kit to fit your body like second skin. It, it's not uncomfortable. I mean, it just, it's just on you and that's what you want. It just, it just fits you well. It's not uncomfortably tight or anything. It's just snug, you know. Some people like their jerseys loose. That's okay too. But if you're going for aero games, Focus on your body. Get the right helmet. Let me show you what I wear. You can shop around, get them on sale. This is the GSC. They got many different kinds of helmets out there. They, they fit, it fits. I like this because it's round. I have a round head. I put that thing on there. It's like I'm wearing nothing. I mean, it just, it gets on there and it disappears. I don't think about my helmet. And, and they've done their testing that regardless of what position you're in, it's more aero than other helmets. So, I actually like this helmet. It's very comfortable, very airy. So, your helmet, your kit, that, you know, your shirt and your helmet, that's the two big things that's catching the wind. So, when you're going in the wind, if you watch the pros, that jersey is fit them neatly. Nothing's flapping. There's nothing to flap. This thing holds you. That's how come they can take, when they go get bottles, they're able to put bottles back here. You know, you can put it in there in your hood. If this jersey was loose, it fell down my back. Mm -hmm. That's how they can put stuff and they kill them body and put them all under here because it's like second skin. So, focus on getting your kit to fit you. I mean, this is this jersey at uh, probably 60 bucks on sale from Prenda Ciclismo. You know, you shop around, you don't have to spend any extra because of the fit, but you got to get them to fit your body. A lot of people out there got loose jerseys. You can't wear the same size. When I, my normal shirts are extra large in US sizes. I go down one size for my cycling gear. So, normally when I go to the store to buy a shirt, I'm an XL. When I go to buy cycling stuff, I'm a large in US size. So, so whatever your size is normally, you wanna go down one size for your cycling jersey to fit you. I mean, unless you're overweight and you kinda, you know, you're trying to get back in shape and whatever, that's all good and well, you know, but then don't invest in too many jerseys at this time until you get to where you want to be. But just know that whatever your normal size is in everyday clothing, you, for the jersey anyway, you want to go down one. You want to go down one. So I wear XL t-shirts in cycling jersey in the U.S. I wear large. This XL European equates to a large U.S. But when I, my normal shirts that I just wear to hang out, they're XL. They fit loose. Cycling jersey, I want it, to, I want it snug. I want, I want to be able to snap it like that. So, 
So, you want to buy your kit, invest in your kit. First of all, you invest in your bike fit, then invest in your kit. And then you can look for wheels and all that kind of stuff. Because if you got a crappy kit, there's no point in spending the money on the wheels because it's not going to make that much of a difference.